I really want to stop this video at this point. I have not been excited to finish a video so quickly. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time stopping by, feel free to subscribe down below if you like these kind of content. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know you're a real one. So in today's video, I will be reacting or sharing my opinion on some dilemmas I came across. I was scrolling through my phone the other day and I came across this interesting dilemmas and I thought it would be a good idea to record this for my YouTube channel. So here we are recording my reaction to some dilemmas. Feel free to let me know what your thoughts or your opinions on some of these questions should be as well. Um, just a quick disclaimer, these are my opinions and they may change depending on my growth. By God's grace, I will be answering the best I could. I hope I don't find myself in some of the situations as well because I glanced through the questions and some of them are unpleasant. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first one, you are at your best friend's wedding just an hour before the ceremony is to start. I think I'm gonna be there like hours to the time. Yeah, anyway, that's not the point. Earlier that day, you came across definitive proof that your best friend's spouse to be is having an affair with the best man slash maid of honor. And you catch them sneaking out of a room together, looking disheveled. If you tell your friend about the affair, their day will be ruined, but you don't want them to marry a cheater. What do you do? You tell your best friend, you tell your friend, even if it's not your best friend, you tell your friend because that's the right thing to do. Just even thinking about it, first of all, I hope this never happens to my friend or anyone I know. But thinking about it, imagine just a day being ruined versus your whole life being ruined. I'm sorry, but I'd rather ruin your wedding than ruin your life. And I mean, looking at it from a grand scheme of things, that is not really ruining your wedding. It's saving your wedding and saving your life. So, uh, yeah, I would rather save my best friend's life and tell her about it there and then than think of the wedding or whatever efforts, money or things were put into place to make the wedding possible because that marriage is definitely not going to be successful. So yeah, I will tell my best friend. But best friend, if you're watching this, I hope this never happens to you and I pray. In fact, this is not going to be a portion. Yeah. The next one, you are an eyewitness to a crime. A man has robbed the bank, but instead of keeping the money for himself, he donates it to a poor orphanage that can now afford to feed, clothe, and care for its children. You know who committed the crime? If you go to the authorities with this information, there is a good chance the money will be returned to the bank, leaving a lot of kids in need. What do you do? Oh. I really hope, this is one of the scenarios I really hope I do not find myself in because we actually discussed this in my Sunday school at church a few weeks ago. I really, really pray I wouldn't be in this situation. So there's two options. You turn the robbery into the authorities, um, right is right, or you say nothing since the money went to what you deem a good cause. It's like, it's actually a bittersweet because all I mean the person is doing wrong of course I'm not going to disregard that fact but when you're doing wrong for a good cause it can be quite emotional to think of punishing the person or writing out on the person for those reasons I feel these are one of those things I would pray to the Holy Spirit to actually tell me what to do however at the end of the day sin is sin and wrong is wrong no matter the reason or the justification for that so coming from that point of view and coming from what I believe a Christian's perspective should be on this is to always do what is right and to stand for the truth. I really hope I would not need to be asked about that, but if I'm in the position where I'll be asked, I really hope I would tell the truth. Um, it's unfortunate I would be right on the person and the person would be going down for doing something wrong in the process of doing something right. Because doing the wrong thing for the right reason doesn't make the wrong thing right. So it's gonna be a sad one, but I, yeah, I guess I would just have to tell on the person if I am being asked. So yeah, 
to stand up for the truth what is right is always what is right and we just leave it to god's judgment from there on but if we're being asked to always be on the side of truth not lie that was a bit of a deep one but i hope i never find myself in such a scenario the next one um you have a job as a network administrator for a company that also employs your best friend's husband one day your best friend's husband sends you a message asking you to release an email from quarantine this requires you to open the email at which point you discover that it's correspondence between this guy and the secret lover after releasing the email you find yourself in a pickle your instinct is to tell your best friend about her husband's infidelities but divulging the content of company's emails is against company policy. Once it becomes plain that your best friend found out about her cheating husband through a company email, all trails will inevitably lead to you as the leak. Do you tell her about this indiscretion? First of all, I don't know why all this is narrowed around best friend. Best friend. I love you. <laughs> um, anyway, I feel these are some of those things that are... are quite tricky but then i guess it all comes down to what your priority is what matters the most to you i love my family and my friends and i would hope i will stand beside them rather than my job if this information could affect one's life in a huge way then why would i keep it to myself i feel these are one of those things i would pray to the holy spirit to actually tell me what to do and how to tell the person or how to show the person because god speaks to us in many ways in dreams through different things to be honest i think i'm gonna find a way to tell the person directly or indirectly but try to make sure it doesn't still go against company policies because you don't want to go against company policies at the same time you don't want to keep it from your best friend so i'm just gonna go with the political answer for this one and there's a way i don't know to write a note somewhere and leave it somewhere and i don't know tell them in a way that it's not directly but i just can't keep it from them because that is very very important the information they need to know about so if i could let them know in some way at the same time not break the company policy i don't know but it's a hard one and it's a tough one and once again i hope i did not find myself in this scenario the next one You've been on a cruise for two days when there is an accident that forces everyone on board to abandon ship. During the evacuation, one of the boats is damaged, leaving it with a hole that fills it with water. You figure that with 10 people in the boat, you can keep the boat afloat by having nine people scoop the filling water out by hand for 10 minutes while the 10 person rests. After that person's 10 minutes rest, he or she will get back to work while another person rests and so on this should keep the boat from sinking long enough for a rescue team to find you as long as it happens within five hours you're taking your first break when you notice your best friend in a sound lifeboat with only nine people in it and he beckons you to swim over and join them so you won't have to keep bailing out of water if you leave the people in the sinking boat, they will only be able to stay afloat for two hours instead of five, decreasing their chance of being rescued but securing yours. What do you do? I mean, this is kind of pretty straightforward. In my opinion, the right thing to do would be to stay in the boat because you all ended up in the situation. No one wants to be that person who runs when everyone else is in trouble and leaves them to figure it out by themselves. Um, so yeah, we're all in this together. We're all going to be in the boat. I'm going to thank my friend for the offer, but ask them. I mean, it's going to be nicer if they could find the safest shore and take everyone on their boat there, come back and grab the rest of us. So if that's an option, yeah, that sounds like a great option. Otherwise, we're going to be there together and try to save ourselves. This actually reminds me of the Titanic, but let's not get into that. But yeah, we can all survive. I believe we can all survive it. Next question. You're involved in a two-car crash on your way to work one morning in which you accidentally hit and kill a pedestrian. Oh my goodness. As you get out of the car, you're intercepted by 
a tearful woman who seems to think that she hit and killed the pedestrian. You're not sure why she thinks she hit the person, but she's convinced there's only you, the woman, and the person you hit on the road. There are no witnesses. You know that whoever is deemed responsible will probably be sent to jail. What do you do? What are these questions? And I didn't read this before starting, like, what have I gotten myself into? This is a really very sticky situation here. Um, wow. I think we all know the right thing to do. It's definitely sad. Oh, I feel I sound heartless answering these questions because they're not real life scenarios. But I want to believe this is what I'm going to do. That's why these are my answers. But. It's going to be sad, definitely, and very, very unfortunate. And I pray and pray and hope this doesn't happen to me or any one of you guys watching. But the right thing to do in this scenario would be to own up to your mistakes. Why would you let someone else take the crime for what you've done wrong? Even looking at the world today, there's so many innocent people in prison and I can't even imagine the kind of lives you live in. Um, in this scenario as well, it was an accident. So I wouldn't blame Whoever is involved 100% but I guess the right thing to do is always standing up for the truth and what is right and by God's grace God's mercies will abound and cover and protect everyone involved I'm gonna stop answering this question as I'm going to do I'm gonna start answering as the right thing to do because I don't know if that's what I'm gonna do but I really hope I always stand for the right thing to do but yeah that is the right thing to do in my opinion moving on to the next one I hope this is gonna be a lot lighter not a heavy question your family is vacationing alone on a private stretch of beach with no lifeguard i hope they can all swim or at least their life jackets because this sounds like a red flag your daughter and your niece both seven are friends and eager to get into the water you caution them to wait until the water calms some but they defy you and sneak in anyway. You soon hear screams of distress and find them both caught in a strong current. You are the only swimmer strong enough to save them, but you only save one at a time. Your niece is a very poor swimmer and likely won't make it much longer. Your daughter is a stronger swimmer, but only has a 50% chance of holding on long enough for you to come back for her. Who do you save first? Whew. Like I said, I am answering these questions from what I believe to be an objective point of view and not an emotional point of view and not from a personal point of view as well. I think, in my opinion, once again, the right thing to do in this scenario would be to save the weaker swimmer first because the stronger swimmer has a higher chance of survival. Just like in any scenario where there's an accident or a natural disaster, the weaker people are always saved first because the stronger ones have a higher chance of survival. So I would say the same in this scenario. I don't want to dwell too much on this question because I really don't have an answer, but I guess that would be the right thing to do. But yeah, the next one. You and your son are prisoners. Am I putting up this video? Because I doubt. You and your son are prisoners. What kind of family is this? And how are you and your son prisoners? How did you end up? Oh my goodness. I hope these are just all made up scenarios and not real life scenarios because these are really difficult decisions to make in life. You and your son are prisoners at a concentration camp. Your son tried to escape but was recaptured and sentenced to hang at the gallows. To send a message to all others who may try to escape, the guard orders you to pull the chair out from under your son. If you refuse, the guard will kill your son and another innocent person in the camp. What do you do? Um, I don't know if a prisoner is allowed to have so much power over this kind of decisions. So you giving the power to the poor parent, I think it's unfair and it's wrong. I'm not very familiar with how prisons work, but I want to guess there's like protocol standards and procedures of how to run things and this doesn't sound like a right procedure to do things so 
I'm just gonna say, don't do it. You report this to someone higher, higher authority and let them make the decision because you're not qualified, I guess, to do such a thing. And that's just harsh and mean. Letting a parent kill your child, even in prison, I don't think people are that mean to let you go through this kind of emotional trauma. Why would you let a parent kill a child? You sound like a demon, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I can't even imagine living with the pain of killing your child. This is a clear answer. Imagine being in prison and then living with the guilt of killing your child for the rest of your life. That's even double imprisonment. And I hope no one finds himself in this situation once again. But yeah, this is really sad. The final question. You are a doctor at a top hospital. You have six gravely ill patients, five of whom are in urgent need of organ transplant. You can't help them though because there are no available organs that can be used to save their lives. The sixth patient, however, will die without a particular medicine. If he or she dies, you will be able to save the other five patients by using the organs of patient six, who is an organ donor. What do you do? This is not even a question. I am not in the medical field, but I don't need to be in the medical field to know you cannot compromise the health of a patient for another. I don't think you have a right to make that decision for the patient. So you do everything you can to give the medicine to the sick patient and you do everything you can to find a suitable match of organs for the other five patients. I mean, it sounds ideal, but in reality, that's not the right thing to do. You give each patient equal treatment and you treat them like they all deserve to leave because they all do. So yeah, in my opinion, I don't think this is up for discussion. That is the right thing to do. And I guess that is the professional thing to do as well. So this brings us to the end of this video. I have not been excited to finish a video so quickly. And um, these were very unfortunate scenarios and I couldn't even bear reading more of these. I didn't expect the questions to be this difficult, but I want to believe I answered them to the best of my abilities. Let me know what your answers to some of these questions are in the comment section down Blue. but yeah i hope and pray we never find ourselves in any of these situations because they all sound really complicated i'm glad that is over but let me know if you want me to make more of these kind of reaction videos and if you have any scenarios or dilemmas you want me to react to as well let me know and feel free to pop them in the comment section down below thank you guys for watching this video and i hope to see you in my next one bye Oh my goodness, I hate this question. Um, what have I gotten myself into? Do I stop the video at this point? You don't need to speak to lie. Just a quick, just a quick, just a quick disclaimer. I didn't read this before starting and I'm confused. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe if you liked the video. I think you liked it. See you in my next video. Thank you.